What's up, you two? It's Mr. Fett. All right, today we got a 2008 Gibson ES335 Fat Neck. All right, it's in this lovely natural finish. Um, so this is a Fat Neck model. These are uh, are kind of rare nowadays. Uh, I wanted to do this video a lot. A big reason I wanted to do this video is because there's a lot of different models of ES-335s and you go out looking um, and it, it can be really hard to navigate and there's always tons of questions on uh, how do I know what to get. You know, there's um, there's been, in, mo in the modern era, there have been uh, two different factories that have made ES-335s. Uh, Nashville um, used to have a custom shop where they did a lot of the historically appointed, the historic series uh, ES models. Um, and, and then Memphis has also always done the standard uh, 335. For a long time, it was the, the dot, the regular um, 335s. Then Memphis graduates started doing more historically appointed ones, um, and now they're doing, I think, uh, almost all of them. But uh, there's a lot of different ones out there, some built in Nashville, some built in Memphis, some regular ones, some more historic uh models. So what are all the differences? Well, this one is, uh, they refer to it as a 59 reissue, but it's not a historic reissue. So what it has is it has the dots. It's got the big fat neck uh, that that 59s were, were supposedly known for, right? It's become kind of a marketing thing, but we'll, we'll go with it. Uh, the big neck, the dots, and the pit guard is a long pick art. Okay. So aesthetically, it kind of looks a lot like, you know, if you put this next to uh, an actual natural 59, to the untrained eye, they look, they look very similar because the appointments are the same. But uh, there are some differences. So, you know, why is the price differences are huge. Okay. So when you're looking at a historic, and this goes for, um, it really goes for almost any of the historic uh, models that Gibson does. They, they charge a big premium for some features that um, may or may not be important to you. So I really think it's super important to when you're going out looking for guitars uh, to try to play them. I, I, now I know it's hard for, for me. I live in a big metropolitan area. It's not easy to go and play a bunch of different ES-335s. Not a lot of people have a wall of them in stock. It's not as easy as going and playing a bunch of different Les Paul. So um, that's something, so that's why a lot of people go to the forums and try to ask because it's hard to get your hands on these. But uh, let me start with some of the differences and some of the, some of the things that are on this. Um, one of the most easy things, and some might think silly, okay, is uh, the headstock and the tuners. These are going to be uh, just your standard generic double line uh, with a uh, single row here and double line. Now, in 59... Right, it was a single row. It, you didn't have a double row; it was a single row. So that's incorrect. Okay, that might be one thing you might want to pay more for. How much? I don't know. Uh, you can't tell looking at it, but if you took this tailpiece off, it is a uh, it's it's a heavy one. It's not the lightweight aluminum tailpiece. It's a heavier one. The it, this is an ABR one. It's not a Nashville, but it is wired. Okay, in 59, it would not have had the, the retaining wire to hold in the saddles. Okay, there's another difference. Um, you'll often hear the guys who love vintage uh, ES models talk about the shape of the horns. Okay, sometimes they're a little more pointed. And, and Gibson changes these a lot, um, and I don't, I don't understand the rhyme or reason why, even within the same model and from year to year, they'll kind of change how they're doing these these horns. Um, so that I'm not going to get into what the right thing is because I I'm not an expert in that. Um, but something else under the hood that I'm not going to be able to show you. Uh, the non-historic models usually have under this neck pickup, or I'm sorry, the, uh, I think it's the bridge pickup. There is a cutout. So. 
these are semi-hollow body guitars, okay? This, these two wings of it are, are hollow, but running down the middle is a big piece of maple in the middle. And that helps uh, prevent feedback. Um, it also uh, imparts a different tone. But uh, these ones have a cutout, like a big hole that you can, if you want to work on the electronics, you can you know, take the knobs off and take all the electronics out, and you can get the whole harness out through that hole. It makes installing um, and working on the electronics much easier. But that wasn't a historic, uh, historic feature. So um, the historic models are not going to have that cutout in that center block. You're going to have to get, if you want to play with your pots and your electronics, you need to get everything in and out through the F hole. Um, of course, dots uh, in 59, it was dots. Later on, they went to blocks. Um, I think, to, I don't know, they've been changing it recently, the, the recent model years, but um, you know, you'll find some with blocks, some with dots. Uh, traditionally, the, 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 out of Memphis, they were doing dots. Recently, they're doing blocks. Um, so those are some of the big features that you'll get what I just mentioned, um, if you want to pay the upcharge for the uh, historic models, you'll get those appointments that I just mentioned, um, and they'd be different from this. But um, I think it's really important with a lot of these guitars to play them and to, to take a look at them. Um, I, I got to tell you, man, it's, I, I say this a lot. I've had a lot of great guitars that didn't start out that were like, eh, eh at first, and it was, a lot of it is just how it's set up. Um, whether, you know, if, if the truss rod needs tweaking, if the, uh, if the notches in the saddle aren't lined up with the pole pieces, that can have a huge impact on the tone. Uh, where you have your pickup set, huge impact on the tone. So, um, you might, you might pick up just a standard Memphis older one, and if it's set up right, it could blow a historic one out of the water that might not be set up right. Um, but you should play them, get get a feel for the necks. I'll show you a little bit. Here's my uh, 76 reissue Explorer, right? Known, these are known for a super, a li the limited edition ones have a really fat neck. And you can see next to that, hopefully, this is no slouch, okay? It's a pretty big neck. So if you're into that, you need to look for one of these or you need to look for a historic model because um, the standard Memphis ones are going to be much, much, uh, they're going to be much skinnier here. The nut width is the same, right? The fretboard size is, is standard, um, but the depth is going to be different, the profile of the neck. All right, that's really all I wanted to say. I'm going to play a little bit more. You heard uh, the neck pickup clean. Let's try both.
start a little game. We'll start with uh, a more of a like a muff, a fuzz face. Try just like more of a regular overdrive here. Start with the neck. ES335 fat neck model in a natural finish. Hope that was helpful. Peace.